Hi guys, Editing Alicia here. So the video you are about to watch was originally made for Instagram. Um, it's a compilation actually of 10 days of hearing loss facts that I did over on Instagram. Um, if you want to check it out, you can. The videos are too long though, <laughs> so I'm posting them here on YouTube. Uh, if you're coming over from Instagram, enjoy the compilation. If you are my original YouTube followers, here's a compilation of the 10 days. Um, pretty good rundown of what hearing loss is if that's what you're looking for. So I hope you enjoy and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hello and welcome to day one of 10 days of hearing loss facts with me, Alicia. So this is something new I'm going to be doing for the next 10 days leading up to Halloween if you celebrate it, if not October 31st. Um, I'm going to be sharing one fact about hearing loss with all of you. So just disclaimer, this is my personal experience. This is what I know. This is what I have faced in my life. Um, this is what I've learned through experience of having hearing loss basically since birth. So that is what I can share. That is what I can speak off of. And if I'm wearing the same outfit and everything at the end of the videos, it is because I filmed these all in one day. Please do not judge me. It's just easier. Anyways, let's get into it, shall we? With day one, fact number one. So for fact number one, I figured I'd start off pretty simple here. Um, so with hearing loss, something that you might not know is that hearing loss, it kind of has a spectrum. You can have a certain range of deafness, so to speak, or how much or how little you can hear. In general, there are four ranges, I would say, of deafness. There is mild hearing loss, moderate hearing loss, severe hearing loss, and profound hearing loss. So mild hearing loss is like, you can hear okay, but like in a loud environment or something, it would be a little bit difficult. You might not be able to hear a whisper that well. Profound, you can't hear anything, which is my case. I am deaf in my right ear, and I cannot hear a thing out of my right ear. And then moderate and severe are like the in-between levels. So like moderate, it's like, uh, you might need a hearing aid. It'll be a little bit difficult to hear conversation sometimes. You might miss things. And then severe, it's like, you're definitely going to need a hearing aid. It's going to be a little hard to hear things just as a general. So those are like the levels of hearing loss in a general term and understanding. So that is day one, fact one. I will see you guys for tomorrow for fact number two. Let me know what you thought. Um, and if you'd like to see more hearing loss facts, definitely let me know. I can definitely do more hearing loss things on Instagram. This is new. So it's sort of just like a test, I guess. Anyways, so let me know what you thought and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Hello, welcome to day number two of 10 Days of Hearing Loss Facts with Alicia. So, for day number two, I'm going somewhere less lighthearted. You'll find out very quickly that there is no rhyme or reason to these. We are discussing ableism. So, what is that, you might be asking? Not a commonly used word. We don't hear it very often. But what you might hear is racism, sexism, ageism, those words which might give you an idea of what this is. Ableism is the discrimination against people with uh, <sighs> hearing loss, blindness, a wheelchair, things like that, um, to put it very generally and in a nicer way. So yeah, that is what it is. It's the idea that people who are different in a, so to speak, are less than. And I'm sure you know that this is not the best thing. But what you might not know is that our world in a whole is generally pretty ableist. The world was not made for people like me, the blind people, the people in wheelchairs. It was not made for us. No, this world was not, it was not designed for us in mind. And what might be considered ableist? Well, let's discuss. So, recognizing ableism is, well, some examples are when a building doesn't have the braille on the buttons and the elevators, that's ableist. 
when there's not a wheelchair ramp for people who have a wheelchair to get in and out of the building, that's ableist. Um, accessible bathroom stalls. If those aren't there, that is ableist in a way. And no, it just is. Never mind in a way. It, it, it just is ableist. Um, and this one honestly bothers me sometimes. The idea that a person with a disability may want to be fixed. That not is not necessarily the case. In a general speak, there aren't cures for these things. We'll discuss that on another day because I will just rant. Um, <laughs> but that is an idea of ableism. Um, yeah, <laughs> in a very general way, these are these are ideas of ableism. So to counteract that and not be ableist, make sure these building designs have the braille so that blind people can find their way around, that there's accessible bathroom stalls, that there are um, wheelchair ramps for people in wheelchairs. Um, sign language interpreters would be great in building sometimes just have in general that is harder to incorporate um, and a lot of these aren't as easy to accommodate in general but don't believe that someone might want to be cured from their disability don't think of a person's story as inspirational or sad from an outside view maybe it looks that way but they might not necessarily want it to be that way it's their story and let it be that way. Let it just remain. This is my life. This is what I've been through, accomplished, whatever. That's their life. They might not want it to be, oh my gosh, your story is so inspirational. Oh my gosh, that was so sad. I'm so sorry you went through that type of thing. They might not want that. So don't assume. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, ask. If you don't know, ask what a person may need. I'm very open to those types of questions and if you have any please do tell me. I am not shy. <laughs> I will share and I will tell you if a question may or may not be offensive if you're nervous about that and it's okay to be nervous about that but I won't be offended. <laughs> so you can ask me anything about hearing loss. Um, but anyways that is the end of day number two. Ableism, a not so lighthearted topic. Hopefully you learned something today, and I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you tomorrow for day number three. Goodbye. Hello, and welcome to day number three of Facts About Hearing Loss with Alicia. So today we are discussing something that plays a major role in my life personally, and is commonly used with hearing loss. Not always, depends, but they are hearing aids. So. You don't see these normally. They're normally quite small. Um, you might see like a little plastic um, thing fitting into the ear here. I don't remember the, the technical term, sorry. Um, but for me, that isn't the case. If you went to school with me, you'll know about this. But if you didn't, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to talk about it. So let's discuss hearing aids. So what does a hearing aid look like? Well. They look like this. So there, I have two because I have what is called a cross hearing aid, basically meaning that because I have hearing loss in only one ear, um, my right specifically, these work together to make sure I hear sound. So the hearing aid that is in my deaf ear, my right side, so this one, the darker colored hearing aid, um, it is basically the the microphone. It hears the sound and then it sends it over to the receiver, this hearing aid, which would be in the left ear, or the transmitter, which basically lets me know what was being said. This is a case-by-case -case thing. It normally works. It's not an exact science. It does its best. <laughs> so let's look more closely at a hearing aid. So here's the hearing aid. So it has like a little volume button right here. It has a battery compartment because these are wireless. Um, and when they're going in the ear, this pit fits nicely right back there. So it's 
fairly noticeable and this goes into the ear like that while this sits there so it's gone right it doesn't even look like i'm wearing it anymore that is basically a hearing aid um do i recommend this for everybody it's a case-by-case -case thing if you're like me and you were in school when you got your hearing aids and you're in a noisy environment all the time you're needing to be able to hear your teacher so you can learn hearing aids great option if you are an at-home worker you're on your computer all day doing video calls and all of that you might not need them i gotta say during the pandemic was not wearing my hearing aids very often because i was on calls for school so it's a case-by-case -case system <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> in a very general speak that is what a hearing aid is and that is what my hearing aid is again as i said in day one this is my experience what i know how i go about things yeah there are also cochlear implants which i do not know as much as about um it is a sur surgical placement of a, basically like a magnet or something goes behind your ear surgically uh and there's like little device i'll see if i can put a picture of what it looks like um that's more of a diagram because i don't know how to explain it very well though that is the closest thing to what i would call a cure but it's not uh it doesn't always work there can be issues with it um but those are the options for people with hearing loss in terms of an aid a help so yes, this is day number three. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know um, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, so yes, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you tomorrow for day number four. Hello and welcome to day number four of 10 Days of Hearing Loss Facts with Alicia. So today we're gonna be discussing something that I think I've mentioned twice now <laughs> in two days. So. Yesterday, we discussed hearing aids, and the big question is, is that a cure for hearing loss? No, it is not. That is the long and short. It's an aid. It's right in the name. It assists a deaf person, and that's really all it can do. There isn't an actual cure for hearing loss, blindness, people in wheelchairs. We don't really have a cure. We have aids things that can help us uh, in our general life and ways to make our lives easier but that's the best we've got um, and there's like there's a lot of things that come into play scientifically speaking when it comes to why you have hearing loss why you're blind um, whether that be some sort of sickness or disease that caused it um injury born with it whatever the ca genetics even whatever the case may be there's a lot that comes into play um with my type of hearing loss in particular i can't cure it it's there forever will i lose my hearing on my other side <laughs> who's to say but we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about cures there isn't a cure uh this is the best way to sum it up um and i guess another question is do i want the cure no i don't hearing loss has been a part of my life basically since i was born i didn't find out about it till like grade four uh so i was like nine um and it's been an emotional journey for sure a lot of people lose their hearing hearing later on in life um, or due to some sort of accident disease sickness whatever but i wouldn't change it it's made me who i am and it'll always be a part of me but it doesn't define me by any stretch i don't let it do that if i did i'd be a very unhappy person um and obviously accommodations sometimes need to be made but i make sure those are discussed um yeah 
that's the long and short of it. Um, so curious, is there one? No. Do I want one? No. Am I okay with who I am? A hundred percent. And that is the way it shall be. Anyways, thank you for watching day number four of 10 Facts About Hearing Loss with Alicia. I hope you're enjoying this so far. Um, if you'd like to see this again, maybe 10 different facts, or if you have questions, definitely let me know. Uh, I love talking about it. I'm not shy about it either. Uh, so yes, definitely let me know. Um, this isn't a plug or anything, but I do have a whole channel about it on YouTube. It's just my name, Alicia Henderson. So if you want more information, I would check that out. Um, it's more detailed <laughs> than I can get in a two to four minute video. Anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow for day number five. Hello and welcome to day number five of 10 Facts About Hearing Loss with Alicia. Day number five, we're halfway there, friends. Halfway there. Uh, so today I'm going to be discussing a common misconception, stereotype, whatever you want to call it, about unilateral hearing loss in particular. So that misconception is the idea that I can still hear normally. To better show this and how it shows up in my life, Imagine this. Hi there. Can I help you? Sorry, what was that? I didn't quite catch that. I'm definitely here. <laughs> I miss things sometimes. Did you need something? That may have been exaggerated slightly, but it often gets pushed off to the side that I do miss things. Um, <laughs> I think a general assumption with my type of hearing loss is that I still have one ear. I can still hear. There's no issues here, which is why it's not counted as a disability. But that's not true. I miss a lot <laughs> in a general speak. Um, often asking people to repeat themselves, which Sorry if I've ever done that to you. I could see why it'd be annoying, but it's just a thing I have to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But we'll talk about the struggles another day because that's definitely a big one. But yeah, this is a common misconception. It's not true. If I miss something you said, just do me a favor and repeat yourself. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think that's it for day number five of 10 Facts About Hearing Loss with Alicia. Jeez, I really need to come up with a better title for this, but I'm five days in. It's no biggie. We're going with it. <laughs> Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow for day number six. We're almost there. Hello and welcome to day number six of 10 Days of Hearing Loss Facts with Alicia. So day number six, wow, we're almost there. And I mentioned yesterday struggles that come with hearing loss. And today I'm here to discuss only one. I'll discuss more tomorrow. But this one, it can cover a whole video. And these are only, these are very short videos. So definitely manageable. <laughs> so today, I'm going to be discussing something that you may not know existed, and honestly, I don't see why you would, because it's not common to hear talked about, specifically, hearing fatigue. So, what is hearing fatigue, you might be asking. Hearing fatigue is tiredness because you're listening too much, in a very general sense. So. For me, the best way I can describe this is let's say I go on a girl's day with my friends, we're going to the mall, really busy place, crowded, lots of people, lots of talking, lots of listening to my friends who it's hard to hear just in general. Then you add pandemic and masks to that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you get just a lot of listening and a lot of work for my poor left ear that has to do all the work these days because this ear is kind of just there um anyways i have my girls day i come home and i'm tired so tired 
and it's not even because maybe the day was busy or just a lot happened. It's because I was listening a lot and listening really attentively to make sure I don't miss too much. I'm listening to the noisy environment in the background, whether that be the music, the people talking, whatever. And then I'm paying extra close attention to my friends to make sure I don't miss anything they say. That's a lot. <laughs> and it makes me tired. Um, and I've heard a lot of other deaf people talk about it before. It's tiresome to have to listen all day. Um, and draining. Often I'll end up feeling like really irritable um, and like kind of snappish in a way like don't talk to me ah, too much noise <laughs> and then I just need to take a nap and then I'm fine but that's what it is it's definitely a struggle because some of your day is wasted because it's like I now need to take a nap because I'm tired from listening um, yeah <laughs> It's a struggle that isn't a noticeable struggle, nor is it like a thing that affects me too, too much. It's just like, because I only have one ear, because this ear, it can't hear a darn thing. This ear has to work really hard to hear the world around me as a general. Um, and that can be tiring, apparently. Anyways. That is hearing fatigue. I hope I did an okay job of explaining that. Um, it isn't an often like talked about one. It isn't common. Honestly, a lot of this probably isn't common. But I hope you guys are enjoying my 10 days of hearing loss facts. Um, let me know what you're thinking so far, if I should do more, what I should discuss if you have any ideas for me. Or if you need them, send something, something to explain in more detail, message me. Or check out my YouTube channel, Alicia Henderson. I have a lot of hearing loss videos there because I love discussing it. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you tomorrow for day number, I think seven. Yes, day number seven. I'll see you tomorrow for day number seven. Bye. Hello and welcome to day number seven about of 10 days of hearing loss facts with Alicia. You can tell I'm seven days in and I'm filming this all in one day. So it is fun, friends so much fun. Anywho, <laughs> so today we're discussing more struggles. I said I would do it yesterday. I'm going to follow through with my promise. We're discussing three of the biggest struggles I face as a person with hearing loss. Um, again, this is all based off my experience and that's all I have to go off of and what I've learned uh, from other deaf people like myself so the, yeah that's just that's what i have to go off of and it's my experience so if something's different for a deaf person you may know definitely feel free to share with me i love learning about other people's experiences if they're willing to share um and yeah so let's get into it three struggles that i face with hearing loss okay so i'm going to do my best to explain these in the most efficient way possible the first one no echolocation. You may have heard me discuss this before, if you know me personally. <laughs> uh, echolocation in the simplest way is your ability to track where a sound is coming from. This does not exist for me. <laughs> um, real common thing for me is if someone yells something, let's say, behind me, I happen by miracle to catch it, I will look everywhere but behind me before I realize was from behind me and then I'm just awkwardly embarrassed <laughs> um which is why I tell people don't yell for me it's pointless don't, don't try it don't, don't even know. anywho so that is the first struggle that I face the second one is I can't hear in the dark I've only noticed this one once because it's the only time it was actually in a dark room it was for some school thing um we were in a dark room I could not tell who was talking, where voices were coming from. I couldn't pinpoint where people are or anything like that because sight is obviously not being able to be used in the situation. So it was really difficult to manage. I had to tell a friend that was going to be like, keep track of me and if you need me, tap me because I am not going to catch you saying a word to me. I don't even really know where anyone is right now. So it was very difficult. 
and definitely a struggle. It's not often you find yourself in a dark room, pitch black type thing. So it's not a common struggle, but struggle nonetheless. <laughs> and struggle number three, um, one that I face the most often, I would say, and the one that really, 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 really has been an issue for me in the past is headaches. Noise affects me more dramatically so, I would say. I don't like noisy environments as a general. Um, they give me headaches. Um, loud classrooms, the gym, like gym class. I'm talking school because school is like not that long ago for me. Um, it's difficult and it causes headaches. Um, I don't know if it's a migraine type thing. It's just general headache. And yeah, those are, I think, are the three main ones that I'm off the top of my head thinking of. I do have notes and I wrote these like a couple of days ago and <laughs> it's all I could think of in the moment. So these are the ones that I've remembered <laughs> that I struggle with the most. Um, so yeah. Oh, I guess I should also mention masks before I finish this. Masks and the pandemic. Big issue. I don't have a day scheduled for that. But the masks, because I can't, I lip read. So because I can't see people talking or like I can't see what they're saying, um, I even lip, I, I just, I lip read naturally. It's how I know someone's communicating with me. I lose that and it becomes much harder to hear understand people and stuff like that um, with the pandemic. That's just one that I figured I'd throw in here because I just thought about it. Anywho, that is the end for today. Jesus, you're only like four minutes and some five. Oh well. Thank you for watching day number seven. I hope you're enjoying these and they're not super like boring. I hope not, because goodness. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for day number eight. We are almost done with this. Can you believe it? It's almost October 31st or Halloween. I don't know. <laughs> so, yes, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for day number eight. I'm going to stop rambling now. Goodbye. Blah. Hello, and welcome to day number eight of Hearing Lost Facts with Alicia. So, this is take two of this. By the way, anyways, <laughs> you didn't need to know that. Uh, today, we're discussing stereotypes. I've discussed stabilism. I've discussed struggles. I discussed a common misconception. Now I'm discussing stereotypes. Honestly, that misconception might have been a stereotype, but I think those have similar meaning. Probably. <laughs> oh. Anywho, for day number eight, we are discussing some stereotypes that are quite common. Now this is a shorter video, so I'm only discussing like two, but if I discuss more, it's gonna turn into like a 20 minute video and we're not gonna have time for that. So, two, you get two. Anyways, let's get into it with stereotype number one. So, stereotype number one. Hearing loss is only in older people or People with hearing loss tend to be of the older age. Um, not true. <laughs> I'm living proof, in a way. That's not true. Hearing loss comes to people of all ages. Uh, infants, toddlers, teens, preteens, adults, elders. Every age can have hearing loss. And for a variety of reasons that I do discuss in another day. Um, but yeah, this is a misconception that is not true. Hearing loss, yeah, you can lose your hearing as you get older, but you can also lose your hearing for other reasons. Whether you were just born that way, a tragic accident, an illness of some sort, disease, all ways you can lose your hearing aids, an accident of some sort. Um, all of this is a way you could possibly lose your hearing and with age hearing does tend to go along with sight 
sometimes, but it isn't just in the older aged people. It can come at any age. And if you need further proof, look here. So yes, that is the first stereotype. Let's discuss the second stereotype, shall we? Stereotype number two, that people with hearing loss, disabilities, are unsuccessful, uh, no, this is just hearing loss, are unsuccessful, stupid, and mute. This one makes me mad, sort of. <laughs> so back in the day of famous philosophers like Aristotle, it was said that if you are deaf or cannot hear, you therefore cannot speak and therefore are less than, um, are not, I don't remember the exact wording of it was, was, are not capable of as much as an average human. Um, and obviously as time went on, sign language was created. So people with hearing loss can be successful. It's not impossible. We do require accommodation, um, but if accommodations are met, we can do good things. We aren't less than, we're a normal human. Yes, we have a struggle, but don't we all in some way? Um, that shouldn't be how we're looked at. Uh, as far as mute goes, the only reason a deaf person would be mute is because they haven't been able to hear sound just as a general, or they forgot what sound sounds like. So therefore, they're not able to um, hear themselves talk and learn how to speak. Um, but that's like a more severe case of hearing loss. And it does happen, but obviously with my type of hearing loss, I'm talking because I have hearing in my one ear, I can hear my voice. Um, and I think there are ways you can train yourself to speak even if you can't hear. Um, but I don't know for sure. I'm not an expert on that part of this, obviously. Um, and as far as stupid, we're not. Don't think that. We're people. We have our skill sets, obviously. We're smart in different ways. Um, yeah, without me getting too ranty about it, that's what we're going with. Yes, I'm going to stop thinking about this now because this one makes me sad. So anyways, thank you for watching day number eight of 10 facts about hearing loss with Alicia. This one is definitely more serious, like the ableism one. Uh, but I hope you learned something today or I don't know, just are generally interested in this whole serious thing that I've created. Um, anyways, I will see you tomorrow for day number nine. We're almost done, people. I hope you're enjoying it so far. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello, and welcome to day number nine of 10 Days of Hearing Loss Facts with Alicia. I hope you've enjoyed this so far. Tomorrow is the last day. Um, I just, I hope you've been enjoying this so far, and you've maybe learned something or, um, yeah, any of the sort. Uh, so today, it's been nine days, and I haven't discussed this yet, and I've mentioned it a couple times, feels right to discuss it, the different types of hearing loss. So as a general basis for this video, something that you should be aware of for the video is the different parts of the ear. So there are three parts as a general. There's the outer ear, so the part you can see, the middle ear, which is like the eardrum. And then there's the inner ear, which is like the cochlea, cochlea and the nerve. Those are the three different parts of the nerve, of the, of the nerve, of the ear that I'm going to be mentioning quite frequently today. So with that in mind, let's discuss the two different types of hearing loss, shall we? 
So the first type of hearing loss is conductive hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss is often an issue in the outer and middle ear. Now, without getting too technical, it's often due to issues like buildup in earwax, a rupture in your eardrum, or something like that. Um, wow, aren't I good at this? It's science, pardon me. Um, uh, and these are able to be treated with different medicines and surgery, surgeries or something like that, and just in general. Not everything can. We're going to discuss that. But that is the first type of hearing loss. What's the second type? Let's find out. <laughs> what am I? A doctor I lost? So the second type of hearing loss is sensory neural hearing loss. Now this one is often issues in the inner ear. So the nerve or cochlea. Uh, it can include, it might happen due to noise, uh, an injury of some sort, right? Yes, injury and more. And this one is more permanent. Uh, there's often not a fix for it normally. Um, and in my case, I was born with hearing loss, right? So I have what is called congenital hearing loss, but it is sensory neural because it's an issue with the nerve. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can tell how sciencey I am. Anyways, those are the two different types of hearing loss. So you have sensory neural and you have conductive. Conductive being hearing loss that can, in general, be fixed. Sensory neural being the one where, sorry, it's not as easy to be fixed or just generally can't be fixed. So that is the end for day number nine. Tomorrow is the last day, friends. I hope you've enjoyed this little mini series that I've done on Instagram for you all. Um, yeah. So I will see you all tomorrow for day 10. Uh, Halloween, if you will. Um, or October 31st, if you don't celebrate it. Uh, but yes, I will talk to you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Goodbye. Hello friends and welcome to day 10 of 10 facts about hearing loss with Alicia and happy Halloween as you can see I am Wonder Woman yeah <laughs> so it's been 10 days of facts about hearing loss I hope you've enjoyed this little mini series type thing I've done um and today I sort of just wanted to conclude it um, so for the past 10 days, we've been discussing hearing loss, a passion that is something that I think should be talked about more. It's my big passion in life to advocate for this stuff. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, and honestly, it doesn't make me sad to know that I have hearing loss. Um, can it be lonely? Yeah. Um, has it affected my mental health? Of course. But does that mean that I let it bring me down all the time or take over my life? No. I am still Alicia. <laughs> um, I'm a bookworm. I'm an artist. I'm a normal girl who happens to be dressed as Wonder Woman for today. I made that symbol myself, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and that's just who I am. It doesn't make any difference, the disability. I don't care what the color of your skin is, your sexuality, your age, what disability you have, if you have one. It shouldn't matter. We're all human. And humans deserve respect, decency, um, any level of goodness should be given to humans. Um, and if you don't know what it's like to be in their shoes, then do your research. Don't judge on the stereotypes you hear because they're not always accurate. In fact, they're most often inaccurate. Um, disabilities have a really long and harsh history and a lot of why we're treated so terribly in the past is due to the stereotypes. It's due to what people perceive instead of what they know. And obviously, disabilities aren't visible. Just looking at me, you wouldn't guess that I have hearing loss. But that shouldn't matter. In fact, it should be 
the one thing that wastes matter. We're human. There's more to us than just, oh, it's the deaf girl. That's not it. There's a lot more. So I hope if you take anything away from this, it's that no matter who you are, you're special. You're you. And nothing can take that away from you. So I think that concludes my 10 days of hearing loss facts with me, Alicia, dressed as Wonder Woman today. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, uh, these will also be uploaded to YouTube in a compilation if you want to check them out, because apparently that's the best way to do it, because Instagram's weird. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed, um, and... Have an amazing day, friends, and happy Halloween. Bye.